Hello guys, welcome to today's video. So if you're like me, you hate slow code. For loops make our code slow. The worst thing we can do is nest for loops together. For i, for j, for k, you've probably experienced your programs get extremely slow. And if you're like everybody else, especially the Rust and C++ fanboys, you blame Python. Python is a slow language. Well, let's look at how we can improve our for loops very, very easily using the NumPy library. We have what I call loop one, and this is our traditional method of doing a for loop. I have an array that's gonna be n by n size, and I'm gonna create this using the NumPy library. So we're, we're, we're always gonna have a NumPy array, so it's apples to apples. The only difference is how are we gonna uh, iterate through this array? Are we gonna iterate through it using a, a traditional for loop? Or are we gonna use more advanced methods and, uh, and um, vectors? So let's look at our array. So I've got an array that's n by n size, and I'm very simply gonna do an i by j. I'm gonna loop through that array, so I'm gonna go by the length of that array, the number of rows, and then the number of columns, which is the size of the first row, is always gonna give you the number of columns. So we're gonna loop through that array, i, j. And all we're gonna do, real simple calculation, is we're gonna take i, j, we're gonna to go to that element, multiply it by a two, and save it back in that element. So we're gonna loop through every element in an array, we're gonna double it, put it back in the array. Now this is a very uh, simple example, but this is actually very realistic. So if you think about a lot of the projects we're doing with our computer vision and things, we have an image, two by two image, uh, a, a matrix, right, uh, of two by two size, and we wanna go through all those pixels and do something. Get the color, put the color, calculate the average color, whatever. So this is actually a very applicable but simple example. We are going to test this um, for size one, so one by one array, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. So 10,000 would be a 10,000 by 10,000. So that's a really big piece of data. Now I wanna also uh, say one thing. I've switched to Vim. I'm using Vim now, guys. This is actually uh, Lunar Vim. Uh, so I apologize, I'm not quite as swift as I used to be uh, with Visual Studio Code. I'm still getting used to the key bindings. If that's something you're interested in, I do strongly recommend you get into it. Um, I'm starting to see the benefits, some of the shortcuts, it's awesome. But I apologize, it's gonna look a little clunky for a little while till, I'm, till I get better at it. So I'm gonna run this code, and we are going to see. So we got our first, second, third, fourth are done, and that fifth one, that 10,000 by 10,000 is gonna take a while. I'm gonna speed up the video, and then we'll look at the result. Okay, holy smokes, that last one took 40, seven, almost 48 seconds to execute. So let's look at this. This first line of code is our, our one. Oops, our, this is our, uh, our one here. This would be our 100,000, uh, or sorry, one, 10, 100,000, 10,000. So if you think about it, every time we add a zero, right, one, 10, 100, our data gets 10 times bigger. So it would make sense if it was linear, it would make sense our speed gets 10 times slower. But let's look at what's happening, especially on the bigger side here. So when we went from 0 0.004, we got 10 times bigger on our data size of our number n. Our data structure got n by n, so it got actually a square bigger. And we had to loop through all those elements. So let's look at what happened when we did that. We went from 0 0.004 to 0 0.39, basically 0 0.4. That's 100 times slower. So every time our, our size goes up by 10, we're actually going up by the square of that with the calculation, so we're up to 100. Let's look at the next time. We go from 0.39, so if we did that times 10, we should be at four seconds, but no, we're at 47 seconds, so more than 10 times. Now if we had gone to, if I had, if I had gone one more you know, order of magnitude bigger, this would be another 100 times, so it'd be 4,700 seconds it would have taken me to run the next execution, which is why we didn't do it. So that's a traditional IJ for loop that you've probably implemented in Python. So can we do this a lot better and a lot faster? Yes, we can. Let's look at the NumPy code. Okay, loop two is the exact same code, except I'm using built-in NumPy functions. NumPy functions are extremely fast and extremely efficient and can achieve the same result. 
So we're doing the exact same thing here. We're instantiating a array of size n by n, but the difference is instead of looping through each individual element, accessing every element like I did here and multiplying it times two, I'm using NumPy's vector calculations that are built in and it will, and, and by the way, NumPy is kind of a wrapper for the C, uh, for C code. So it's extremely fast, it's extremely optimized, which is another advantage. And what's happening here is, uh, I'm basically just treating this like a variable. So I'm saying array is equal to array times two. So this array times two, NumPy is actually going to handle all of the access for me, and it's gonna return the result. So let's take a look and see how much faster that is. All I'm gonna do is run, do the same code here, but we're gonna do loop two. We're gonna run it, I'm gonna save it, I'm gonna run it, I'm gonna clear the console here. I'm gonna run it, and done. That's insane. That took 0.29 seconds. What just took 47 seconds took 0.29 seconds. So I just want you guys to think about the application. In our last video, which I'm showing you now, if you remember, our screenshot uh, calculation for our Lego blocks, our desktop calculation, was extremely slow. It was like less than a frame per second. It was crazy. And what we just learned today is how we are going to solve that issue. If you remember, all the code we wrote was using traditional for loops, and that's why it's abysmally slow. So we can directly apply it to that project and fix it. So that's just an example of where we need to use this. So with that, thanks for watching the video. Consider liking and subscribing. I'd appreciate it, and have a great day, guys.